back. The one at the bottom of the pyramid, believe it or not, was Viracocha, foam of the sea. So you say, well, how could they build a pyramid in layers every 50 years, and the guy at the top be at the bottom, and the guy at the bottom be at the top? Well, of course, the first will be last, and the last will be first in the Bible. And this is what they're trying to tell us. In fact, there are tunnels connecting these levels together. So they put the top body at the bottom, the bottom body at the top, again, to convey all these messages. And all of the treasures of Viracocha are contained in his tomb at Saipan in Peru. For example, the number of the super gods uh, we saw earlier, when we had the matrix, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, all the way down. And then at the bottom, we had 1,366,560. That was on level 9, when we added up all of those cycles. Here we see we've got nine, nine, the straps of the coffin are held together with 99999, nine, 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 which again is the number of the super gods, which tells us that the men in Peru were, like Lord Pekal, a super god. And there is Viracocha Pachacamac. And that's a picture you saw briefly earlier on with a bat mask over his face. Now, the brat brought death. So, and he's got feathers on his head. So we have the bat mask and we have feathers on his head like Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl was the feathered snake. The feathers and the snake of Egypt, Tutankhamun, were the feathers, feathered snake of Mexico, Quetzalcoatl. Also the feathered snake of Peru. We have the same theme coming through, whereby the feathers epitomized the spirit in the sky and the snake represented the body on earth or the body on the ground. <clears throat> and if we look at all of the treasures from the tombs in Peru, we start to see all of the super science of the sun, I call it. Here we have the sun with the north pole of the sun here. Don't forget the north pole. This north pole here goes around every 37 days, but the equator goes around every 26. And once we start doing the calculations, uh, we, un we can work out different cycles of the sun. And here we see the four sectors of the sun, the positive, negative, positive, negative, just as we, ha as we have on here. These are all treasures in the tombs of the bat god, the god of death, the god of darkness, the solar wind. There's a solar wind, which we got from, this is from Mariner 2 spacecraft, this plot that we saw earlier. As the sun rotates, every seven days, we get seven days positive radiation, negative radiation coming from the sun, seven days positive, seven days negative, seven days positive. This was discovered by Mariner 2 spacecraft in 1962. And if we take a plot from the sun, using a computer, we can see the protons coming off the sun for seven days, then we see the electrons coming off for seven days, then the protons, but because these two are going around together, but then they lose synchronization with each other, what we find is that after a month, this one, the blue one, has slid backwards by 90 degrees against number one. So as it's moving backwards, it's like a mixer, and we don't see field number one, we see garbage. So that month, all we get is garbage. What we should get without the North Pole is seven days negative radiation coming off the sun towards the Earth. Then as the positive sector goes by, we should get seven days positive. Then as the, seven, as the sun spins around some more, we get seven days negative because the sun is spinning all the time and it takes 28 days to go around. But what we've seen is when we have a look at the interaction is that because the North Pole slides through field number one during a month, what we saw was, as they both go round, this blue one is going backwards through field number one. So during field number one, the radiation goes through number one and stirs it up like a spoon. So the radiation coming off the sun is number two, three, four. The next month we go through the next quadrant, the radiation coming off the sun is one, three, four. The next month it's one, two, four, and the next month it's one, two, three. So we have four codes of radiation caused by these four fields. These are pieces of jewelry which show the sun carved into four sections. That's not very clear, but it's black, white, black and white there. So they're trying to teach us what I call the super science of the sun. And if we now look at the picture of Lord Pekal, and we look at the small man with a hat, I call this guy here, because he was found in the tombs in Peru in 
uh, Viracocha Pachacamac. There's two Viracochas, Viracocha and Viracocha Pachacamac at different levels of the pyramid in Peru at Saipan. And this, when they reconstructed it with all the bits they found, they reconstructed this model of Viracocha Pachacamac, who they call God of the World. And he's got these feathers on his head. And in the tomb with him were these small representations of this small man with a hat. And the small man has corks hanging from his hat. Because he's telling us that Viracocha is in, on earth in the place of flies, the place of filth. If we look at Viracocha now and compare him to Lord Paykal, who came from AD 750, here we see the little man across his bat mask. He's got the bat mask across his face. That, so we can understand this Mexican picture now because it, it's very similar to the one in Peru, even though there's 300 years between them. We see the small man here with his arms in the air and the small man's got a perfect heart. And the corks on this guy's hat correspond to the teeth on Lord Paykal's face. It's telling us that Lord Paykal was a reincarnation of Viracocha Pachacamac, the man from the tomb, that's the bottom of the tomb, he was also a reincarnation of Viracocha, who came 200 years later from the top of the tomb. It's telling us it was the same guy. And Lord Paykal has the 144,000 carved on his forehead. And the 144,000, of course, was the number of those who go to heaven when they are pure. In the Bible it says, you'll know the ones going to heaven because they've got 144,000 written on their foreheads. That's in Revelation. So if you remember the two transparencies from earlier on, we put them on top of each other here. We rotate them like this. We saw the picture of the man with the bird on his head, which was there. And we saw the picture 1440, 1440 backwards, 00, 144,000. And the Bible says, you will know the ones going to heaven. They will have 144,000 written on their foreheads. That's what it says in the book of Revelation. You will know them when you meet them, the ones going to heaven. And here we have Lord Paykal of the Maya, the leader of the Maya, buried in the tomb in Mexico with 144,000, 144000, backwards 144000, written on his forehead. He's got a small baby bird on his head, which is a Quetzal bird, brightly colored feathers. And he's got the small man with a pure heart from Peru. And there's a small heart, man with a pure heart telling us that the way to heaven, if you want to become one of the 144,000 here, you've got to have a pure heart, then you'll become a bird, a baby bird, and go to heaven. So it's all interesting stuff, isn't it? Now, as I said, it, I'm actually going very, very slowly because of the equipment, because it's so bad. And... Uh, what we know, briefly, is that Qin Shi Huangdi, the first emperor of China, of unified China, had two dragons. His emblem was two dragons, and the dragons carried the sun, or Venus. In fact, two dragons carry the twin planet Venus. And Lord Pei, Qin Shi Huangdi, the leader of the Chinese in 220 BC, was shown as a stag carrying a pearl and an eagle and a snake, the feathered snake, Quetzalcoatl of the Mexicans. He was the eagle in the sky, like Tutankhamun, and the snake. The snake on the ground, on earth. And he, he was also a stag. And he carried the seed of knowledge. We saw earlier how Lord Paykal was a stag, and he bowed to the audience, and he had two stags applauding him either side. That was from uh, the mural of Bonham Pack in Mexico. This now is from China of a different time period. In Mexico we were looking at 750 AD. This is a thousand years earlier in China which tells us that the emperor was the stag and the feathered snake which is exactly the same as Lord Paykal of Mexico. It's exactly as Tutankhamun who was a feathered snake. So what we're being told is that all of these guys kept coming to earth. Jesus came to earth many times. He came to earth as Lord Krishna uh, 2,500 years before B.C. He came to earth. If we look at uh, 